Hello. Nice, 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 nice. Thank you. I'm all inspired. <laughs> welcome to that pedal show. <laughs> we can do that. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello, and welcome to Pick a Mix. We have had a day. It, it's been a bizarre day. It's been amazing. Uh, and that, after what we've experienced this morning, we had Graham Coxon in this morning. That video may already be out, or it may not be. Um, who blew our minds, quite frankly. Go and watch the video. Yeah, go and watch go the video. It might not be out yet when it is. And we should also say, why are we wearing these scarves? Me, because I have a little bit of a cold. You've been poorly. I've been very unwell. You've had Nam plague. Yeah, well, I didn't. Anyway, yeah, had some sort of plague. Uh, anyway, Colt from um, Walrus Audio sent us these Oklahoma... Oklahoma, Oklahoma, We're Oklahoma. That's right. Okay. Let's see, Oklahoma City. Is this oh, okay? Chiefs? It's is a it? proper sports thing. Yeah, it's I've a, never been a sports. It's a basketball a sports team. thing. So I can say oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, they're a basketball team. Oh. That's brilliant. Uh, Oklahoma, I did. I had this memory. I had this information in my brain, and it's completely left me. Real pricked. Uh, so the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder. What? <laughs> Is it Deadly Rotten Scoundrels? Rupert? Oklahoma, know. Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Oh, I haven't seen it. I'm sorry. I totally missed your gag. <laughs> oh, it's the, it's the best thing best thing Steve Martin has ever done. Do you know he plays the banjo? Yeah. Like, yeah, he's amazing. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so the Oklahoma City Thunder are a basketball team. That's that one, isn't it? Not that one. Or touchdown! Not that one either. They, that one. Yeah. Right. It's funny how sport just doesn't matter in the UK like it does in America. Mm. See, I, I, that's why I had to leave Australia. I like the scarf though. Thank you. Cold. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, I couldn't bench press 220, so out of the country. I'm trying to work out if it's going to impede my guitar playing or not. No. Handy. Does this mean now that every other town in America is going to turn off because... They support a different basketball no, team. No, it means that every other town in America would say, oh no, hang on, you guys need, need, need this, this one. Need this scarf. So we're going to have okay. a whole collection yeah. of well, sports scarves. You know, sports memorabilia gratefully received. Yeah, sports team! Right, pick a mix. It's been blooming ages. Uh, four pedals in <laughs> what's now just smashed 30 minutes. Uh, <laughs> new stuff, interesting stuff that we've seen. Yeah. And that we've got some corkers today. We do indeed, we do indeed. Uh, the Ascension from Pro Analog Devices. An octave fuzz is An what that is. An octave fuzz, yes. So we have the TWE1 um, with the Ethos from Custom Tones. Do you remember the? we had the large one of these? It's really exciting. This is now the small one. Yep. The large one sounded awesome, so I am very excited about that. We have the Warped Vinyl Hi-Fi from Chase Bliss. Um, and Which is what? It's a vibrato pedal slash chorus pedal. Cool. And the Fathom Reverb from Walrus. The aforementioned scarf senders. Yes. Thank you again. Yes, very, very excited about this bunch. Um, we met Scotty for the first time in, at Cam <coughs> and uh, Scotty uh, Smith from Primal Devices. All round superstar legend. Um, and I'm going to tell you, Dan, it says Ascension means to rise above. And the Ascension Octave Up Fuzz rises above all other Octave Fuzz pedals on the market today and tomorrow. <laughs> nice yeah, one, Scotty. You are done, Scotty. Nothing like a bit of uh, uh, positive affirmation, optimism there to get, get us in there. Uh, clean Octave Up to a heavy, thick, feedbacking Octave Fuzz. Well, I'm going to like this, aren't I, already? Let's be honest. Uh, cool. Right. right. Have some schwangage then, Daniel. Okay. Today's amps are Victory Sheriff 22 and Marshall uh, 1987X, because those are the amps we were using for Graham Coxon earlier, so we thought we'd and leave them in place. And sounded pretty good with him, so... Uh... Oi! Right. What did I say? To, what did I say to ah. you about? What did I say to you?
Dan has made the semi-foolish uh, <laughs> decision to move to 12s on his telly. And I've told no. him, if I catch him fluffing any notes or skipping over things, or I'm, I'm going to slap his hand, because yeah, if you're going to use those strings, you've got to play them all. Hearing damage. Uh, some serious frequencies going along there. Awesome. Um, right, swell, volume, peak is EQ. Right. From bassy to uh, into the octave. Yep. Boost um, is bass and balls and, uh, yeah, what does it say? Um, a boost. Right. Girth, body, thickness, sustained first. And attack lets you control the amount of signal into the octave fuzz circuit which was what oh, we've seen cool. kind of in the manticore yes. potentially a bit yes. as well Wow, so it's really peaky in there. I want to try something, so I'm going to turn the Marshall off. Uh, the Victory is still on. I just wanted to boost the front end of the Victory so it's hitting a slightly driving our amp. That's a lot of Endless fun. fun. It almost gets a bit like ring modulatory yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah. Something, something. We need to do a show on that. Yeah, I'd like to get that next to some other octave ups and stick them either side of some fuzzes and sure. have a listen to that. There's a show. Killer. But blimey, headroom, amazing amount of uh, range in all of those controls so you can just dial it in. Yeah. Yeah. Great work, Scotty. Cool. Really nice. All right. Ethos. Ethos, okay, uh, yet another piece of paper. Now, we should do some research before we start these videos, really, but where's the fun in that, frankly? Uh, Rob Hall, the designer custom tones LLC, mm -hmm. says, hi, Dan and Mick. Couple of points of interest when operating the pedal, Daniel. 
Uh, starts to react like a tube out being pushed hard when the gain is set to one and up. Mm -hmm. uh, it breathes and responds dynamically to your picking attack and your guitar's volume setting. For optimal cleanup with your guitar's volume control, set the bright switch to high. Okay. With single coils. Clean to scream. Okay, fine. So it's a virtual two-channel amp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see, see where we get to and okay. uh, what we learn next. Uh, I'm going to start with the strap, but then I'm going to swap guitars, Daniel. Cabinet simulator. Oh, if is there a separate output? No. Yeah, what does that do then? Oh, if you're running direct. By twelve. Or two. So this is without it. Presumably, if you're going to run direct. Yeah, I so guess. the 4x12 or a 2x12, but the 2x12 just. Yeah. As, just try that. We had a rock guitar, Daniel. Play, and I shall reveal something interesting. bought us a present. You're kidding me. Ha ha ha! Come on! <laughs> no way. Oh, where's the way, where's the bar? The oh bar, my the bar will goodness. Be forthcoming. Oh my goodness. 
Please don't. If I've forgotten the bar, I'm sacked. We did a video recently on distortion pedals. We had a Boss DS1. You've really got to screw it in. You've really got to give it some okay. mumbo. Um, and uh, we kind of, the sounds were okay. We had a few other issues which we're going to um, investigate in another video. But I thought we don't have a proper rock guitar. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if we had a gem? Went I on the, cannot believe Went this. on the internet. This, how much do you think that is full retail price? I don't know, a couple of grand. They were always two grand, weren't they? Yeah, they or were. Or twelve hundred quid for the cheap one. Right. Four hundred and fifty five quid. No way. Full retail. Mahogany no. body. They've you can see where they've saved a bit of money here and there. The finishing's a bit rubbish in there and a couple of other things aren't quite right. But um as an instrument, it plays fine, it feels great, it it's not overly heavy, the hardware seems fine. I'm don't even try and tune it. I lit I took it out of the box. And I've and I'm I've toyed with putting tens on it, which I'm too scared to do until I've got a day to actually do it. What's on it? Eights? Nines. Nines. Of course it's nines, man. That Bring forth the rock, Dan. It's the first time I've heard it plugged in. I deliberately haven't plugged it in until this moment. <laughs> Keep doing this all day. Sorry, just I had one. Yeah, I had one. This is the one I had. The the, the desert yellow. Yeah, Ibanez gem. So we're going to try and learn to play it a bit better. And this isn't, you know, we're not taking a mick or anything. This is not a joke. This is definitely something that Dan and I both aspired to when we were kids. And for those tones that we never really go anywhere near. Uh, We've got to get the string sorted out, but because I, you know, I can, I can yeah, barely yeah, feel no, one of my fingers. I physically However, can't play it. once this is sorted out, this is going to be amazing. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Man, it's, it's really cool for what? 455 quid. That's incredible. It's a comedy. Okay, so um, one thing I was remarking on just before we move on: um, less than 30 years between these guitars. 1958, right? Right. That's when the electric guitars. You know, oh yeah, sort of it's, come to fruition yeah. by then, hadn't it? You sort of messed around all the way up through the fifties. Mm -hmm. Telly, Strat, fifty, fifty-four. 
to 88. Was it 88? 87 or 88, I right. think. I think. So it's about 30 years. Uh, and really, you know, apart from the fact it's yellow, it's got t two more frets and one of these. Not that much difference, really, is there? This is unreal. Anyway, okay, right. Uh, back to uh, more familiar territory with the ethos. I just want to hear what it's like with uh, turn, some... Maybe turn the game down a bit. Humbly up clear. Okay. of tweakability yeah so I think that's definitely one to get in there and really where are we there really um, spend some more time with I think mm -hmm. like it okay uh, from our friend Joel Corty at Chase Bliss Audio has sent us the water final so I've had the original for ages which I, I, I love it's a it's a wonderful uh, modulation one of the things when uh, doing analog modulation because a lot of people found it uh, they wanted it a little bit brighter they found it a bit warm okay um, the idea is that you, you get the vibrato and you mix in the direct signal for your chorus and you know if you listen to the modulation on a lot of the old chorus pedals they are quite warm but because this can do you can take the direct signal out people wanted the the straight vibrato to be a little closer in tonality to the original tone so, the idea with this, oh, I can't believe this. So if I turn the mix all the way up and get rid of all the uh, clean tone, you've only got the, um, the modulation, right? And so I can make that warm or really bright. This is analog. Now when I mix the direct signal back in, So, can I hear it with your telly? Can I hear it with your yes, telly? Um, one of the things that's confusing me about that guitar is it's got fingerboard markers in between the places where they should be, and therefore I've got no idea where to put my fingers. So that's something I'm going to have to get used to. I cannot believe this. Well, yeah, oh, more in time, more in time. That's great. That's so great. Let's uh, hear it with something more familiar, maybe. Okay. Lou Love. So, you know, again, if I turn the mix all the way up um, and I 
uh, increase the depth and increase the warp. So the warp is how much um, the modulation modulates. It, it doesn't keep it even, it keeps it, you know, it, it moves around. Yeah, sure. Really yeah. interesting. And then you've got the lag control, so you can move that center point. Oh man. It is beautiful. And those two, the switches on the right hand side are the, uh, looking at the diagrams, presumably the shape of the rise. That's right. And the shape of the fall. Yep, so if I go again, yeah. mix all the way over. Uh, this is with a, a sine wave. Yep. And now if I go triangle wave. But now I can go, uh, I can go triangle on the front and sine wave on the back. So it does crazy wacky. Can you get it somewhere that's not quite so crazy Absolutely. wacky? Absolutely. So if I just put on a sine wave, get the depth down a bit, miss down quite low, legs in the centre, tone down so it's quite warm, slow it down a bit. There you go.
Sorry, just putting me in very, very John Schofieldy because the wobble gives you that. It does. It's really funny. I've I didn't totally... play anything remotely Schofieldy, but it put me in that frame of mind. When I heard, I've always, <clears throat> I've always liked John Schofield, but when I heard him live, yeah, that's when it all clicked for me. Yeah, all that, that bridge sounds... pickup, bit of sizzle on the top yeah. there. Um, I mean, he'd go for something a little more extreme than that, yeah. probably. Yeah, but... yeah. Wow, that is. There's a lot of integrity in that. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. And let's do our usual customary mention of the dip switches on the back. They are allocating parameters to for, different functions. Yes, and all for expression. Uh, so you can either allocate, um, there's, there's, a t there's a ramp knob here, the yeah. tone rock knob, which also doubles as the ramp knob. You can allocate any of the knob functions to that knob, or you can allocate them to a uh, expression pedal. Yeah. So you can change all those things on the fly. It's really so clever. So just ultimate, ultimate control. So if you've yep. got a vibrato or a chorus and you're like, mm, I really like it, but I wish it could do that. Yep. That can. Yes. And then presets as well, yeah? And presets. Yeah. It's amazing. You can see why people love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, in your opinion, how much higher fi is it? Oh, the, the extra top end in it is absolutely substantial. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I mean, with that, with that extra top end, you know, there's less filtering, so you, there is a bit more noise. If I, if I turn the tone knob right up, hear that? Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's 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 only small, but it just means there's a bit less filtering on there. So when you hear, and the, and the modulation is all top. So if I turn the top down on the modulation, of course, that that tone only affects the modulation. <laughs> really interesting because uh, so presumably that all the signal path in that's analog right everything and it reminds me a little bit of the top end you get out of your um, electric mistress which yeah. digital just can't do can't do it doesn't can't seem to be do able it. to do it it's that it's it's bright and it's trebly and it's presency and it's all of those things but it's never harsh and it's never compressed no yeah it's it's really great really interestados yeah. okay we were at NAM a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, thanks and for the, thanks for the disease. <laughs> this, for me, uh, was the pedal that I was most looking forward to getting back in here and having a play with. Nice. Yeah. Fathom from Walrus Audio. We like Walrus Audio. We do. Um, Lovely guys. Uh, apologies for for not getting the the strict history right, but it feels like Walrus Audio haven't been around forever. No. In the way that some of the other big American brands are yep. around forever. However, it does feel like Walrus are kicking goals, kicking goals, yep. scoring hoops. Yeah. Thanks to our Slam dunking. Uh, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Uh, thunder, thunder. People in America will not understand how we don't understand sport in the way. But anyway, the the, uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder, uh, scoring hoops. Whatever you do. A slam dunk, isn't it? It's a slam dunk. That's a basketball so reference. Walrus, so Walrus Audio yeah, have, been, actually, have been scoring slam dunks. Yep, yeah, indeed. And uh, three pointers. How about that? Uh, anyway, it feels like Walrus could definitely and should rightfully be up among all of those top brands from the US. Because right. their stuff, the design, uh. the execution, the stand at NAM, everything about them just screams like, we're really bloody serious about yeah. this. Yeah. And everything we've played so far has been... The, Extremely nice. Yes, the uh, the tremolo, which has the harmonic yeah monument um, monument tremolo, yeah. is awesome. The ARP, ARP eighty seven delay, delay, unreal. Killer. So we heard this briefly at NAM. Um, Have a guess how many uh, reverb algorithms you've got. Is that four? It's four. Four. <laughs> Do you know what they are, Dan? Um, yes, H P. L and S. So there's a hall. There's a hall. Hang plate, on. Plate. Lo-fi. Lo-fi. Right. The the lo-fi was the one that I heard at NAM, which sort of blew me away. So let's have a, let's have a play. So here we go. Start with the hall. Everything else on sort of noon esque.
Awesome. Okay. Yes. Beautiful. If it only did all of that, I'd be happy. Yeah. So uh, just to explain what happened there, uh, decay, obviously length of the reverb. Dampen is a tone control for the brightness of the repeats. Mix, obviously self-explanatory, mix of the wet and the dry signal. Um, X uh, does different things depending on different modes. Mm -hmm. And in the hall mode there, it was affecting the pre-delay. Sounds like this, this is a short pre-delay. The reason pre-delay is important is if I'm using that with gain, uh, do this one. Oh, a bit less gain. It gives the the note the 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 opportunity just to sit by itself. <laughs> Oh man, that sounds absolutely lush. Uh, and that's just one mode. Okay. And there was three levels of modulation in there, which you see I was mucking about with. Right. Plus a blooming sustain. Uh... Plus, plus, plus. On off. Or. Momentary. Very clever. If you didn't get that, one tap is on. One tap is off. If you've just got that bit in your song where the reverb just comes in for like a bar or something like that, and you don't want to go on, off, you go, come up to your bar, on, off. Lush. And yeah, uh, you can also set it to no trails, okay. so the reverb would just die the minute you turned yep. it off. Yeah, should you want to. Okay. okay, that was that was hall uh, yep. plate. Do you have a guard plate? Slightly tangential question. What's the difference between a hall reverb and a plate reverb? I know what the technical difference is, but how do they sound? Not a million miles apart. No, but the plate seems to have more body to it, there's more, more mid range. Yeah. Um,
Man. Massive plates. Well, can you get, doll me up a really short little plate there? <laughs> Can I just hear how what the what the X control is? It's a filter width apparently. Apologies to Kirk Fletcher for sort of mostly stealing most of that, but anyway, um, that's Ace. I so right. Come on. In then. case you don't know what happened there, this is the lo-fi, and instead of like for example the hall reverb, where you have this absolutely massive, luscious, <laughs> big, glorious thing, the lo-fi crushes all those frequencies. And it's like the reverbs from a little AM radio, and I just love it. It's like Roy Cooter, isn't it? least bit creative and or Blake Mills you could make that sound awesome. That's amazing. Uh, it's basically like just having the room mic up wasn't it a million miles away. Yeah. Okay one 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 last sorry we are way over time today but uh, last mode is sonar. This, this is never going to be a pick and mix is it? I think this will have to be a full show. <laughs> <laughs> sonar okay is it a shimmery thing what is it? Octaves. We have to wait for the decay. Yes, uh, high and a low octave Ooh. with the ability to blend the octaves with the X knob. So the X knob blends low low to high. high. Awesome! Uh, okay. Octaves. We should remember this from now because we played it there. But you know, okay. is this distortion number four? No.
Okay. Or played by somebody with a bit more creativity. <laughs> Sounds a bit steel drummy. Yeah. Hang on. Yes. I feel uplifted. That you... is amazing. It's very cool, isn't it? I, I love it. Did you notice how I managed to sneak all the pedals on at the end there, Daniel? That was... Did you? And amazingly, you kept it somewhat musical. Somewhat. In fact, I would say better than that. I would say you kept it incredibly musical. Oh, dude. Yeah. You are not well, though. Yeah. <laughs> it has been said. <laughs> okay. Excellent, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um... A uh, massive thank you to our preferred retailers, uh, Anatons in the UK, uh, Rift City Music in the USA, and Pedal Empire in Australia. A massive thank you to our patrons and Patreon, and also a massive thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and bought a t-shirt. T-shirt. Patrons, 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 get the app. Please get that. We're going to start doing stuff on there yeah. soon, and there's going to be some nice tasty little things there uh, for you guys, patrons. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>